TRES-2b, or not to be, is a planet where night never ends. And it's not your regular night with stars shining in the beautiful skies. Here it's pitch dark and scorching hot. TRES-2b is a gas giant, roughly one and a half times more massive than Jupiter, and its surface absorbs light better than charcoal. It might also have a faint dark red glow because of its burning air, which is as hot as fresh lava. Lovely. In the star system of 55 Cancri, there are five planets, four of which are gas giants similar to Jupiter and Saturn. But the fifth one, or rather the first because it's closest to the star, is different in a most horrible way. 55 Cancri E is so close to its sun that half the planet's surface is a literal ocean of molten lava. The other half is in eternal darkness because it never sees the sun. The planet is always turned to its star on one side. And between the scorching and the dark, there's the twilight zone, a thin strip of gloomy nothingness. That's a getaway spot. HD 189377b, well, I'm not going to say that again, is the only exoplanet in the orbit of its star. And at first glance, it looks quite pretty, blue and white swirls making up wondrous patterns on the surface. But these pleasant colors actually come from hard silicate particles in the planet's atmosphere, which means it rains glass here. But the worst is that winds reach the speed of 5,400 miles per hour, or almost Mach 7. Well, for comparison, the fastest wind speed on Earth was 254 miles per hour, over 20 times less. Thus, the glass falling from the sky travels horizontally at hypersonic speeds, shredding everything in its path. Better duck! The next system, whose name I won't even try to pronounce, um, this one, has three exoplanets, which are all being slowly destroyed by their own star. It happens because that star is not a regular. It's a pulsar, a rapidly spinning core of an exploded star. It creates powerful electromagnetic pulses in several directions while rotating at several thousand times per second. As a result, the planets orbiting this deceased star are slowly being eaten away and will eventually disappear entirely. Kepler 70, hey, I can say that one, is a hot blue dwarf star that exploded into a red giant some 18 million years ago. At the time, it was orbited by at least two planets, the closer of which was a Jupiter-like gas giant. Its name was Kepler 70b, and it still exists. But the overgrown star consumed it and transformed it into a blazing hot rocky world. Right now, it's one of the hottest planets ever discovered. Its temperature is higher than the surface of our sun. It was lucky to survive spending time inside the star, but it's evaporating now and will probably be no more in the near future. WASP-12b is one of the weirdest and saddest planets out there. The enormous gravity of its star, combined with the planets consisting mostly of gas, result in the star slowly devouring its protege. Uh, so pal, like, uh, what's eating you? My mother. WASP-12b has already taken the form of an egg, stretched toward its merciless sun, and it's unable to do anything with its condition. In another 10 million years, the planet will inevitably succumb to the voracious star's appetite. Hey, you asked. If you ever wondered what it's like to walk on ice and hot coals at the same time, Gliese 436b is a planet that would give you a vivid example. Being extremely close to its sun, the Neptune-sized exoplanet boasts temperatures hotter than a blazing oven. And yet, it's covered in ice, which burns incessantly. This ice is much denser due to the enormous gravity of the planet, staying solid even under extreme conditions and not melting away. No list of frightening worlds could do without mentioning Venus, the Earth's evil twin. <laughs> the second planet from the Sun has an atmosphere so thick and full of clouds that its surface is much hotter than that of Mercury. Volcanic eruptions constantly thrash Venus, its gravity is almost a hundred times stronger than ours, and those clouds I mentioned are not made of water, but of sulfuric acid, which condenses and rains down on the ground, adding to the inferno. But even if you were brave, or crazy, enough to try to pass through these clouds, you probably couldn't. The winds up there are as strong as some of the most powerful hurricanes back on Earth. 
Here we have a very long name for a very, very cold planet. Although the host star is not too far away, it's a small and rather cool red dwarf, whose light and heat barely even reach the planet. The temperatures out there fall as low as minus 370 degrees, which is only marginally warmer than absolute zero. The exoplanet is thus dark, gloomy, and covered in eternal ice that never thaws. I thought I thaw that thumbworth. Still, if it has a rocky core, it might generate some heat. So there's a chance that deep below the frozen surface, some unknown alien things might lurk. Dimidium, located roughly 50 light years away from our solar system, is a planet hostile to any living thing on many accounts. It's tidally locked to its sun, which means one of its sides is always facing the star, while the other is always turned away. The hot side is heated to over 1800 degrees, perpetually blown over with winds reaching 600 miles per hour. And that's winter. Well, actually, I don't know that. Despite Dimidium being a gas giant, it has a large amount of iron in it, which melts and evaporates in the atmosphere, creating clouds. And when those cool down, they fall on the surface in the infernal rain of molten iron. That'll test your metal. Oxygen is usually viewed as an element that might bring life to a planet, but this is definitely not the case for Osiris. Scientists were shocked to find oxygen on this planet, or rather around it, because it's eight times closer to its star than Mercury is to the Sun. This extreme distance makes Osiris a living melting pot, where anything that could burn will. It's also responsible for a very short orbit of the planet around the star. A year on Osiris is just three and a half days on Earth. To boot, the atmosphere of the planet is constantly blown and melted away by the heat from its sun. Vacation? Nah, let's keep looking. Karat Exo 3b is neither as hot nor as cold as some of the others on this list, but it's terrifying in its own more insidious way. It's a gas giant similar in size to Jupiter, yet 20 times denser. This makes this exoplanet's gravity weigh down on everything on its surface 50 times more than it would on Earth. Stepping on it would be your ultimate doom, because you'd be immediately crushed by the density of its atmosphere. Karat 7b is another oven-like world. Its day-to-day -day temperature is over 4,000 degrees. Combined with the rocky surface, it presents an infernal landscape. The rocks on the ground bubble and boil, evaporating in the atmosphere where they cool down and eventually fall back on the surface in a brimstone rain. The saddest thing about Karat 7b is that it might have once been a gas giant whose atmosphere melted away from the heat, leaving only the scorched core. You wake up Ew. and a sharp smell of rotten eggs Ew. hits your nostrils. You look around wildly and realize the smell isn't coming from your mom's cooking downstairs. It's super hot, and there are giant red clouds churning in the sky. Yikes! You're on Venus! The planet is named after the ancient Roman deity of beauty and love. But sadly, its smell doesn't correspond with its name. The atmosphere of Venus is made up mainly of carbon dioxide, but thick clouds of sulfuric acid completely hide its surface from prying eyes. Sulfur has a really bad stench which causes the surface of Venus to smell like rotten eggs. Gross! The atmosphere on the planet is also really hot and thick. The carbon dioxide traps a small amount of energy from the sun that reaches the planet's surface. This greenhouse effect has made Venus one of the hottest places in the solar system. So the good news is you wouldn't be able to smell the planet's stench as humans can't survive on its surface. Well, that's a relief. Almost all other planets in our solar system only have a super small selection of different scents on their surface, unlike Earth. But what about our moon? The scent of the moon is similar to something called smokeless powder, which is a propellant used in firearms. Basically, the dust on the satellite smells exactly the same as when a shot is fired. Apollo 17's pilot Eugene Cernan says he could smell it straight after removing his suit from the spacecraft. But nobody's exactly sure why it smells like this, as there's zero similarity between the two substances. Smokeless powder is made up of a mixture of two things with very complicated names, nitroglycerin and nitrocellulose. 
black powder. Its older counterpart is made of charcoal, saltpeter, and sulfur, which makes it smell in a very specific way, but not like rotten eggs, despite the sulfur content. Moon dust is made up of a bunch of things that primarily come from broken meteorites. This includes iron, magnesium, and calcium, but it doesn't contain either of the things in smokeless powder, or black powder either for that matter. And what's weirder is that moon dust samples brought back to Earth have been odorless. Experts say the smell could have been the dust reacting with oxygen or water inside the lander. The smell could also be due to the temporary release of charged particles from the Sun that have become trapped in the dust. Mercury is the planet closest to the Sun, but it doesn't really have a strong smell. This is because the atmosphere is so thin and scattered. Mars. Like Venus, it's another world that doesn't have the best scent ever. It's a good thing we can't breathe its air. The red planet smells like rotten eggs, again caused by sulfur. If human colonies did move to Mars, it looks like we'd have to burn a lot of scented candles to cover the smell. But the good news is that the sulfur quantities are pretty small, so the smell wouldn't be too overwhelming. Jupiter also has a whiff of eggs, but also smells a bit like it's been mixed with cleaning products. This is because its atmosphere is a mixture of hydrogen sulfide and ammonia. But what you smell basically depends on where you are in the planet's atmosphere. Some regions have higher concentrations of ammonia. This substance is used in a bunch of cleaning products here on Earth. So areas high in ammonia could have that strong burning stench of cleaning fluid. A lot of people also Ew. say that ammonia smells like a pair of dirty socks that haven't been washed in forever. So it's for sure best to avoid these parts of the planet. Other areas have a lot of hydrogen sulfide, and because it contains sulfur, these parts would also smell like rotten eggs. The third and final scent you'd find on Jupiter is bitter almonds, or marzipan, just like the kind your grandma puts on cakes around the holidays. This is in areas where a substance called hydrogen cyanide is most common. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system. It's so big that it's 2.5 times larger than all of the other planets in the solar system combined. It's also the fastest spinning planet in our solar system. Next up, the ringed planet, Saturn. Its atmosphere is made up of about 96% hydrogen and 4% helium. Yes, that's the gas that makes your voice go all squeaky. Both hydrogen and helium are odorless, so Saturn probably doesn't have a strong smell. It does, however, contain traces of our good friend ammonia. That's the smelly sock gas. Saturn's atmosphere also has a bit of phosphine, which can sometimes smell like garlic or decaying fish. So there might be a slight bad stench in the air. The thickness of Saturn's atmosphere is only 37 miles. For comparison, our atmosphere here on Earth is almost 300 miles thick. Saturn also has some of the strongest winds in our solar system. They can reach a whopping 1,118 miles per hour. One of Saturn's moons is called Titan, and it has a super odd scent. Its atmosphere is made up of something called benzene, which has really weird effects if inhaled by us humans. It can make us feel dizzy and make our ears ring. It doesn't actually smell that bad, though. Its scent is kind of like almonds. Now it's time to take a dive into Uranus. This gas giant has gotten itself a reputation as the smelliest planet in the entire solar system. There's a lot of stinky stuff floating around on the planet, and its upper atmosphere is made up mostly of hydrogen sulfide. Yep, that's the molecule that makes rotten eggs smell so nasty. But the temperatures are so severe on Uranus that you'd pass away even before you've had a chance to smell anything. Uranus's atmosphere is a staggering negative 392 degrees Fahrenheit. That's so cold that it would almost instantly freeze anyone. The final planet in our solar system is Neptune, and it's just as cold as Uranus at negative 373 degrees Fahrenheit. Neptune also smells pretty bad. Some scientists say it smells like seaweed that's washed up on the shore. Others say again that it smells like rotten eggs because it contains a bunch of hydrogen sulfide molecules. 
But like on Uranus, you're not going to have time to take in the nasty smell. As the most distant planet from our sun, it's dark, freezing cold, and has supersonic winds. No one would be able to survive when faced with one of the icy hurricanes, which are constantly raging on the planet. Neptune is the only planet in our solar system that's not visible to the unaided eye. Well, we've covered the planets, but what does space itself smell like? Space is mostly a vacuum, which means it doesn't actually contain any molecules, so there's basically nothing to smell. But some astronauts have actually said space smells a bit like fried meat or hot metal. This smell is most commonly reported in the first instance after the astronauts re-enter their spacecraft. They shut the airlock, repressurize, and then remove their helmets. But there are a bunch of theories suggesting that the meat smell isn't actually space. It's either from the equipment operating the airlock or from interactions between space particles and the spacesuits. Astronaut Tony Antonelli said that space definitely has a smell that's different than anything else. Talking about his fellow spacewalkers coming into the ship, another astronaut, Don Pettit, said he noticed that this smell was on their suit, helmet, gloves, and tools. One thing we definitely know that has a smell, though, is comets. If you could inhale a big whiff of a comet, it's likely going to make you feel lightheaded and maybe even sick. The odor from comets is like a mix of rotten eggs, old smelly socks, almonds, and it'll also have a hint of biology dissection lab. On the bright side, though, the presence of hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide in the scent would block your sense of smell after the first sniff. So at least the stench wouldn't linger. But the bad news? Nearly all the ingredients that make up a comet's smell are toxic. So you're probably going to want to avoid coming into contact. Hey, listen up. Do you want to lose weight fast or gain more mass in just a few seconds? Forget all about diets and sports. We have an out-of-this-world way to do it. Space travel. And now I'm taking you to the heart of our solar system, to the sun. Hold on and bring your shades. There's no solid surface here, just hot liquid plasma. So take your heat-reflective suit and stay on the platform just above the boiling surface of the star. On Earth, you weigh 135 pounds. But here, on the Sun, your weight is about 3,600 pounds. That's like a small sedan or a hippo. Hey, just saying. It has to do with gravity. The bigger and denser a space object is, the stronger its gravitational pull and the heavier your body feels. The Sun is 99% of the mass of the entire solar system. But although the star is 333,000 times as heavy as Earth, it's also much bigger. That's why gravity is only 27 times stronger on its surface. You can't stand up straight here. You get pulled down by gravity. And if on Earth, you could lift 135 pounds of your own weight, here you can only lift a small pumpkin. Happy Halloween! Moving on, Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun, is very hot, about twice as hot as the maximum temperature in your kitchen oven. You jump down onto the rocky surface of Mercury and step on the scales. They show only 51 pounds compared to your real weight of 135 pounds. Mercury is almost 17 times smaller than Earth, but its core and crust are very dense. So the gravity here is only 2.5 times weaker than that on our home planet. It means you can jump 2.5 times higher here, and you feel much stronger. You can lift a big gorilla, but don't forget to make it wear a spacesuit with an oxygen supply. When night falls on Mercury, the planet cools down incredibly quickly. The temperature drops to three times as low as at the North Pole. So let's get out of here before you freeze completely stiff. The next planet is Venus. Oh, there's a nasty smell. It's the sulfur dioxide in the air. It would also smell like this near a volcano on Earth. You get on the scales and 122 pounds, almost as much as on Earth. No wonder Venus and Earth are called twin sisters. This planet has almost the same size as ours and only 20% lighter, so it has almost the same gravity. But you couldn't live here because Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, and the atmospheric pressure on its surface is 92 times as high as what we have on Earth. You'd only feel the same pressure if you dive 3,000 feet underwater on our home planet. Without special equipment, you'd be crushed at such a depth. Your spacesuit is made of titanium to withstand this kind of pressure, just like an atmospheric suit for deep-sea diving. 
and it weighs about 830 pounds. It's like carrying the weight of a motorcycle. That's why you feel weaker here than you do on Earth. But moving on to our home planet, or more specifically to its satellite, the Moon. Several astronauts have been here before. You might have seen videos of how awkwardly they moved around, sometimes even falling. That's because gravity on the Moon is six times weaker than on Earth. Your solid 135 pounds of weight turns into 22. So now, you weigh like a plastic shopping cart. On the bright side, you can now lift six times that weight. You can flip a car or lift a pony. You can probably even lift the lunar rover that's still standing here left by the last moon mission. One of the astronauts, Alan Shepard, hit several golf balls here. And one ball weighs less than a half an ounce on the moon. Hey, maybe you can use all that power to clean up the stuff people left here. That's about 250 tons, including rovers, broken space probes, lunar module sections, golf balls, and the like. Nah, let's do the cleanup later. Now we're going to Mars. Hey, you're the first human on the surface of the red planet. And the first thing you do is weigh yourself, of course. Ah, 50 pounds, almost three times less than on Earth. It's even less than the weight of a capybara, a big rodent from South America. That's because Mars is 50% as light and 10 times as small as our home planet. And since gravity is weaker here, you become three times stronger. You could lift two of your friends. But this kind of gravity is actually a problem for people. We're planning to colonize Mars, but our muscles are used to the constant gravity of Earth. They won't work at their full capacity on the red planet. This will cause health problems for the astronauts, so they'll need to exercise all the time or tie weights on themselves to become heavier. They'll have to carry at least 10, 20-pound dumbbells to get close to their real weight and keep their muscles toned. Now, a quick trip to Jupiter. This is a gas giant. Hey, again with a gas. And it doesn't have a solid surface. All you see are dense clouds. So it's probably best to stay on the platform. Jupiter is 317 times as heavy as Earth, so the gravity here is much stronger. Your scales show 340 pounds. That's like the weight of a big wild boar on Earth. Now, you can barely stand on your feet in your spacesuit. You feel very weak. The maximum weight you can lift here is 60 pounds. That's as much as a husky dog weighs. Let's take a look at Jupiter's moon, Europa. You stand on the scales and see 18. Yup, gravity is so weak here that you weigh like a garden gnome. At the same time, you can easily lift 1,000 pounds. That's like a horse or a grand piano. With that kind of strength on Earth, you could flip a school bus or lift a small car over your head, if you wanted to. Moving on, Saturn, another gas giant. Hold on tight, woohoo, winds here can reach 1,100 miles per hour. Such a gust of wind could carry you across the United States from one coast to another in just two hours. Hurry up and get on the scales. 144 pounds. It's a little more than you weigh on Earth. That's why you feel a little weaker, like after a good workout at the gym. Saturn's moon, Titan. You might want to stick around a bit longer because here you feel like a real weightlifter. You can lift seven grown-ups in your arms. Or a great white shark. Just be careful with those teeth. And your own weight here is about 17 pounds, like a domestic cat. Maybe a fat tabby. Uranus is the coldest planet in our solar system. It's 10 times as cold there as in a freezer. The scales show 120 pounds. You can lift a truck wheel here. The last planet in our solar system, Neptune. It's 17 times as heavy as Earth and 4 times its size. And the strongest winds ever recorded blow here. The number on the scales is 150 pounds. Yep, you've gained a little weight. But the same would happen if you took a dumbbell in your hands on Earth. Now, how about moving to more unique space objects? For example, a neutron star. This is one of the heaviest and densest objects in the universe. A neutron star has the weight of the sun, but it's so small that it would fit in Manhattan. But this space object has a solid surface, so you can land your spaceship here. The neutron star's weight and density makes gravity incredibly strong here. Your 135 pounds on Earth turn into 190 plus 11 zeros pounds here. You'd be flattened like a pancake on a neutron star. You wouldn't even be able to pick up a match here. A regular sewing needle would weigh 140,000 tons. That's like 2,000 Boeing 737s. Next in line is a black hole. Well, we don't even have a number to describe your weight here. Black holes are the densest and heaviest objects in the universe. 
They lie at the centers of galaxies and can weigh millions and billions of times more than the Sun. They're so heavy that they warp space-time. Once you're in a black hole's gravitational field, you can never get out of there. And the gravitational pull increases with every inch you get closer to the center of the black hole. If you were falling into a black hole and extended your arm forward, the force affecting your fingers would be much stronger than that pulling on your elbow. And your hand would stretch like spaghetti. Your weight is infinite here, and your strength is infinitely small. Don't even hope to lift a single atom or photon of light here. Yeah, that's enough. Let's go home.